Okay, well, Nottingham University is famous for um, having developed the technique of magnetic resonance imaging. So we thought that for Easter, we'd have a go at taking an image using magnetic resonance of a cream egg. Well, so we're going into an area where the magnetic field is very strong. So we have to take out anything that could be magnetic because there's a danger it will get pulled into the magnet. In order to get a signal in MRI, we have to use radio waves. The cream egg, uh, inconveniently for MRI, is surrounded by a metallic foil. Radio waves won't pass through this foil. So in, in an MR scanner, an MRI machine, what we're doing is measuring a signal that comes from hydrogen nuclei. Those hydrogen nuclei, they behave a bit like tiny magnets. They line up with the magnetic field and we're able to excite them in some way using radio waves, which have a very particular frequency. When we excite them, they give us also back a radio wave signal, and that's what we pick up and the signal that we then use to make an image. And the, the key thing with MRI is that we make the signal a little bit different depending on where in the object it came from. Then we can tell where the signal came from, then in an image we can say this much signal came from this place, this much came from this place, and we can build up a two-dimensional or even a three-dimensional picture of, a, of an object. Normally we're obviously imaging human subjects. The vast majority of hydrogen nuclei in the body are found in water molecules, so normally we're looking at water. But there's also actually quite a lot of hydrogen nuclei in, in fat. In fact, probably what we're mo most likely to see, if we see anything in the cream egg, is actually the fat that's present in the chocolate and also in the, in the cream filling. OK, so this is Karen who's going to uh, put the things into the uh, scanner because I'm wearing a mic which won't, I can't take into the magnet. Your, your camera also uh, doesn't like very strong magnetic fields, so if you took it too close, there's probably enough ferromagnetic material in there that it would eventually get pulled in. We actually, first to explain, we put in two cream eggs just to get a bit of a stronger signal. The bright region here around the outside is the is the chocolate, so probably I guess what we're seeing there is the fat inside the chocolate. So we're seeing the hydrogen nuclei in the fatty part of the chocolate. Then inside the slightly darker mottled region is the, is the creamy filling, where probably we're seeing the water in that, which uh, is also giving us a signal. But there, there's also fat in there as well, giving rise to a signal. MRI is a bit more complicated than that and the signal depends on a few other factors like how solid the material is. So that makes it a bit more complicated to explain but it's also what makes MRI a very powerful medical imaging technique because you can differentiate between tissues which have quite similar amounts of water but slightly different properties in terms of say their stiffness or how much protein's there and that's what allows us to differentiate disease tissue from normal tissue in, in some conditions. So as we step through, you can see we're kind of going from the thick bit of the cream egg down to the, the thinner bit at the end of the egg. And there, it's just chocolate. So you can see that you just have a bright bit and not much darkness around it. The thing that a lot of people do is when they first set up a system, a new scanner, they don't want to put a person in first. So the thing that a lot of people scan is fruit. So we've scanned probably most fruits that are available or vegetables have been scanned. So pineapple, uh, okra is very good. One of the first images that was ever made in MRI was actually of a red pepper. So it was done by Sir Peter Mansfield when he was developing the technique. And he, he used that to really demonstrate that imaging w was possible. And have you ever imaged a cream egg before today? I have to say I haven't, so it's a new experience for me. So we thought probably it would be a good idea to also look at some real eggs as well as cream eggs and see what we can see. There we can probably differentiate the yolk from the surrounding egg whites. Let's have a go at doing that. Okay, so we put actually this time three eggs, three real eggs in here. So we're looking at again the cross section and we're seeing the egg whites which is appearing as this sort of slightly lower intensity. There we're looking at mainly the water in the egg white. And then the brighter bit is the, the yolk, where we're looking at the mainly probably the fat. We don't see anything from the shell itself because the shell has no water or fat in it, so it doesn't give us any signal. It's interesting, there's a little bit of air inside the 
the egg, which I think if we go up, yeah, there, there's a little bit of air, which is at the, this is basically the top, this is vertically up. So the air's up at the top here. And I think that's, that's in there because the egg kind of, after it's laid, it cools down and the fluid shrinks a bit and it leaves a little air pocket in there. So these are the air pockets in these other two eggs. So again, they're at the top, you know, the air's at the top of the, of the egg. Apparently that's what, you, when you boil an egg, it's the air bit that gives you that flattened end on the, 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 the round bit of the, air, of the boiled egg. Because what the images we acquired, they're three-dimensional. They lots of slices scanning through, and that allows you to then sort of see the three-dimensional structure. That's, I guess, obviously much more useful if you're looking, say, a set of brain images and you want to understand the relationship of you know, different regions of, of the brain to, to one another or to, if you're a surgeon planning an operation, you wanted to find the, the best path to get to a particular area in the brain. This kind of 3D view can be very useful. So it's a 3D rendering now of the cream eggs. So I'm going to hopefully rotate them around so you can see they're actually a little bit different than one another in that there's a little bright splodge in one of them but not in the other one which seems to be on the edge of the chocolate. Do you like Cadbury cream eggs? Oh yeah I really like Cadbury cream eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Will these ones be safe to eat? Uh, yeah absolutely yeah yeah they'll be they'll be probably very good. <laughs>